Hallelujah. Once you've had an opportunity to give, stand with me. I want to share a message with you this morning that I've simply entitled Pray. I want to talk to you about the power of prayer and the principle of prayer. I'll be reading from Philippians chapter 4, beginning at verse 6. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence here today in our midst. Lord, let your Holy Spirit touch every heart, soul, and mind. Let your word be spoken, let your will be done. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here today. I want to speak to you this morning about prayer. As I mentioned earlier, prayer works. If prayer didn't work, people wouldn't still be praying today. We would have stopped a long time ago. But there's power in prayer. There's peace in prayer. You know, when I think about prayer, it reminds me of an old joke I heard years ago. It was one of those dad uh, jokes that... uh, (laughs) Maybe you aren't so funny, but I, I just remember this joke my uncle told me years ago. He said it was uh, a couple of astronauts were getting ready to go out in space. They really didn't know much about uh, science or space. They were more like uh, guinea pigs. They, they were trying to see if people would do okay in outer space. And uh, they told these two astronauts, they said, look, we, you don't have to worry about a thing. This monkey's going to go with you, and he knows everything. The monkey knows what buttons to push and which levers to move and... Uh, He knows all the secrets. They said, you don't have to do anything. Just let the monkey do it all. And they said, well, what if there's a problem? They said, the monkey can handle all the problems. They said, well, what if there's an emergency? They said, the monkey can handle emergencies. And they said, well, you know, what if something happens to the monkey? They said, we're going to give you a letter. It's a sealed envelope. They said, now don't open it unless it's a life or death emergency. Then you can open the envelope. Other than that, they said, the monkey knows everything. And so they got in the spaceship and the monkey started hitting levers and pushing buttons and the rocket took off out in space and that monkey just kept doing things and everything was going smooth. Then the monkey got out of his chair and went to the corner and he fell asleep. And one astronaut looked at the other. He said, what do you think's in that envelope? He said, I don't know. He said, you want to open and look inside? He goes, well, you know, they told us only in a life or death emergency. He goes, well, they don't know, you know, what's going on up here. We'll just tell him it was an emergency, you know. Monkey's not watching. He's asleep, you know. The guy said, I don't know. He goes, come on, let's see what's inside because I'm curious. He said, all right, we'll tell him it was an emergency. He said, open the envelope. And they opened the envelope and there was a letter and it said, wake up the monkey. Amen. (laughs) That's kind of how it is with prayer. God answers prayer. Amen. And do you ever find yourself in a situation that you don't know what to do? Call out to God, amen? Because God's got it. Jesus isn't only the answer, but he knows the answer. He can provide the answer, amen? God answers prayer. If you're ever in a situation, you don't know what to do, call out to God and he'll tell you what to do, amen? God has all the answers. God is the answer. All we have to do if we want victory is to go to God in prayer. We don't have to know the answer. We don't have to understand the answers or or even understand the question. We just have to know that God is able. Amen. God will answer every prayer and he can supply every need. Amen. My God will supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. There's power in prayer, but God taught us how to pray. There's, There's a way, a proper way to pray. Jesus gave us an example when he gave us the Lord's prayer in Matthew 6 verses 9 through 12. He told the disciples, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He taught them how to pray. And and today I want to give you some simple principles to, to follow that might help you in your prayer life. The first one begins with the letter P in the word pray which stands for praise. Before we go to God in prayer and ask him to supply our needs, we ought to take a moment to praise God. Just praise him. Even the Lord's prayer begins with, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
It begins with praise. In our opening text, the Apostle Paul said, Be careful for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. I know in my life, I found that sometimes when I'm going to go to God in prayer, there's something that I want or something that I feel I need. I'll begin my prayer, and I always begin by thanking God. God, thank you for this and, and for this other thing. And thank you. And, uh, and a lot of times, by the time I get finished with all the thank yous, I'm like, you know what, God, never mind. I'm okay, you know. I realize that things aren't so bad after all. I remember years ago, I, I had a bad day. I can't remember what happened, but it wasn't a good day. And I remember coming home, and uh, Lisa wasn't home yet. And, uh, I, you know, I was by myself, and I was feeling defeated. And I, and I called out to God. I said, God, how come I'm not blessed, you know? I feel like I should be blessed, and I'm not blessed. And I unlocked the door to the house and walked in, turned on the lights, you know. And I said, God, how come everybody else is blessed, but I'm not blessed? And the house was a little warm, so I turned on the air conditioner, you know. <laughs> so I just don't feel blessed. And, and I sat down on the couch, got the remote, turned the TV on. And the room wasn't quite cool enough, so I got the other remote, turned the ceiling fan on. <laughs> Hello. And it was going too fast, so I slowed it down a little bit. And then I thought, you know, God could have me sleep under a bridge. Maybe I'd appreciate what I got. Hello. You're sitting there with your air-conditioned house, you know, your manicured lawn, your remote control. Lisa and I went to Africa with our family, and uh, when we got to the hotel, we're, we're walking into the hotel, and there was a couple of teenagers sitting in front of the hotel, one at, one at the front door on the right and one on the left. And uh, the, one of them had a bazooka, and the other one had a machine gun. And I don't know about you, but it made me a little nervous. <laughs> Because the one guy looked 12, the other one looked like he was about 15. And I, so I turned to the guy driving the hotel car. I said, what are they here for? He said, they're here for your security. I said, funny, I don't feel secure, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we walked in, and uh, the lights went out, just power shut off. And so I went downstairs and said, hey, the power went off. They said, yeah, that happens all the time. They said, it'll come back on, don't worry. It just shuts down sometimes. I said, Okay. I went back upstairs, and uh, one of my kids was looking out the window, and uh, I walked up to him. I said, uh, what are you looking at? They said, Dad, is, is that guy down there naked? And I looked down there, and what it was, I didn't know they had these things in Africa, but they do. It's a public sh shower. Uh, people don't have showers in their home, so you just go to one of these public showers, and there are four walls, but there's no roof. And so from the you know, fifth floor of the hotel, you look down and well, you get to know your neighbors pretty well, you know. <laughs> and, and I can see the guy's clothes hanging on his pickup truck outside, you know. And I thought, man, uh, uh, yeah, it looks like he's naked. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, that's what's going on. And uh, we wanted something to drink and we were afraid to drink the water. So I, I went downstairs and I, and I looked. They had a little, uh, like a little store there. And in the... The store, there was this cooler, and in the cooler, there was two Pepsis. And so I told the guy, I said, I said, hey, I'd like to get those two Pepsis. And he gave them to me, and I paid him. And when I paid him, he took off running out of the hotel. I, I was thinking, I hope he works here, you know. He ran out of the hotel, and about five minutes later, he came back with two more Pepsis. He restocked the cooler. And I just bought all the inventory. And I said, hey, buddy, I said, look, I may want to buy more, so I don't want you to have to make a whole bunch of trips. Can you get me like a six-pack of those, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whew. So we asked our driver, I said, well, you know, we'd like to go around town. And, uh, and the owner of the hotel said, hey, he, uh, the guy's name is Booba. He said, Booba, take them to the new market. And I was like, yeah, the new, that sounds like a good idea. We'll take them to the new market. Booba said, okay. And so we got in this hotel van, and he tied the, the back of the, the van with a like, bailing wire, you know, piece of wire. It wasn't like a hotel in America, okay? And uh, we took off, and uh, he pulled into this area that, that looked like a, uh, like a flea market, but it, a bunch of little tin huts and a little stream running through the middle, and there were flies everywhere and bugs. And, and I thought maybe there was something wrong with the car because he stopped there, and I said, what are we doing? He said, this is the new market. <laughs> I said, thank God you didn't take us to the old one. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, we, we got out of the car, and everybody could tell we were from out of town, you know. 
And the first booth we went to was spices. And uh, I didn't know what it was because they had these barrels with spice, but it was all black, like a mound of black. I didn't know what that was. And as we got closer, the guy did like this, and all the flies flew off. Would you like some spice? I said, not anymore. <laughs> no, no, thank you. And after we left the market, I said, Booba, let's go to uh, get something to eat. Uh, I said, is there a, you know, like a big hotel around here that's got a restaurant? He said, uh, he says, there's a Sheraton hotel, or I think it was a, I think it was a Sheraton. Or, uh, anyways, I said, let's go there. So we headed down to the Sheraton hotel in the car, and as we pulled down the main street toward the hotel, there was a military tank right in the middle of the road, and it's, it turned his gun toward us. And I said, Booba, what's going on? He said, well, the African Union meetings are there today. I said, let's go to another hotel. Hello. <laughs> I don't want them to practice shooting that weapon, you know. Amen. Whew. And Booba said, you know, I want to show you my house. I said, oh, that's great. We went to his house, and, and uh, we walked around this little wall, and, and uh, and there was a screen door and a hut made of mud. And when I walked in, I noticed that the, the floor of his house was just dirt. I mean, it was, it was the ground. There was no floor. There was no foundation. And I said, Booba, that's, that's dirt. He said, yes, that's dirt. I said, well, what do you do when it rains? And he looked at me like I was crazy. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, doesn't your floor get wet? He said, well, of course, you know. And I realized, man, we don't realize how blessed we have it in America. Hello. When I walked into the, to the yard to go to the house, he had a cage with two chickens. And when they saw me, the chickens went, <laughs> oh, man, I hope he's not hungry. Amen. <laughs> Whoo, boy. I tell you, we're blessed. We don't even realize that God has blessed America. Amen. And when we pray, we ought to thank God for what we have. And a lot of times if you'll do that, you, you will realize you may not even want to ask for the things you were going to ask for because you realize how blessed you are. But sometimes when I tell people when you pray, begin with praise, they'll, they'll say something like, yeah, but you don't know my situation. You don't understand the pressure I'm under. And I may not feel like praising. A lot of people don't realize that when Paul penned these words that we just read, most scholars believe he was in prison in chains when he said, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. He was in prison in chains. Some people feel like they can't praise God when they're going through a difficult time, but I've learned that it's when you're going through a difficult time that it's the best time to praise God, amen? Because when the praise goes up, the glory comes down. When the praise goes up, the chains fall off, amen? When the praises go up, the power of God comes down. We ought to praise him all the time, amen? Not just in the good times, but in the good times and in the bad times, all the time, amen? In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, amen? I found that when I go to God in prayer and begin with thanksgiving, I often forget about what I was going to ask him for in the first place. Sometimes we come to God because we feel bad, we feel less fortunate than others. But I'm going to tell you something. God loves you, and my God will supply every need. Amen. And if you'll begin with praise, you'll realize all the things that he has done. We ought to humbly go before God instead of going to him and asking for things all the time. We have to remember that he doesn't owe us anything. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he said this, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Notice that. If they just humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven, and I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. Wow. When prayer begins with praise, it helps us to come humbly before the throne of God. The second thing I would tell you that when it comes to prayer is the letter R, and, that's, and that stands for repent. Somebody say repent. The word repent simply means to turn around. It's kind of interesting because re means to get back or again. And pent is a word that we, mean, we call the pinnacle or the top. The penthouse in a hotel would be the, the top you know, room, the best room. And repent is almost like saying, let's get back to the way we were supposed to be in our best condition. Amen. If you're doing something that you know you shouldn't be doing, stop. Turn around. Amen. 
Repent. If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, that's what repent means, to turn from your wicked ways, to turn away from sin and seek God. You know, sin separates us from God, amen? Sin separates us from God and sin will nullify the power of prayer. If you're, if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, we ought to stop, amen? And seek God. He says, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive your sins and I'll heal your land. It's interesting because before God told them that, this is what he told them in 2 Chronicles 7, 13. He said, if I shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send pestilence among my people. In other words, if things aren't going the way you'd like for them to go, if things look bad, if things aren't the way you wanted them to go, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn away from sin, I'll hear you, amen. And I'll bless you, amen. Wow. God wants to bless you. God loves you. And, and we can turn away from sin. It, it, it's part of, part of praise is, I think, drawing us away from sin. Because when you praise God, you want to serve God, amen. It's like trying to play a sad song with a banjo. It's hard to do, man. Because a banjo is a happy instrument. You know, you, you get that. Dun, 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 dun. You, you can't say, I'm gloomy and sad. You know, it's hard to do that. And when you start praising God, it's hard to, you know, to be sad and, and, and to be broken. Because God will lift you up. Amen. The Holy Spirit will lift you up when you praise him. To humble yourself, it, it comes from the uh, Hebrew word hummus. So some of you might know of a a dish you can buy called hummus. It's, it's a bean dish, but it looks like sand. And to humble yourselves means, means to get down low, like to the ground, and just realize that God is so much greater than we are. Amen? We humble ourselves before God. We put ourselves lower than him. When you praise God, you elevate him. You lift him up through praise. You lift him up through worship. Amen? So before you, you pray, praise God. And secondly, repent. If you're doing something wrong, stop and turn away. Repent, because sin will separate you from God. The scriptures say in Psalm 66, verse 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me. And we want God to hear us, amen? If you have unforgiveness in your heart, your prayer is not going to go anywhere. After you praise, repent, and ask God to forgive you of your sin so your prayer can be heard. And asking God to forgive you also involves you forgiving others. Amen? Because if you don't forgive others, the Bible says you can't be forgiven. When the Lord was teaching his disciples to pray, he said this in uh, Matthew 6, verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you yours. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. He says, if you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive. Hello. You can't expect God to forgive you and you don't forgive anyone. No, that's not how it works. Remember, what we sow is what we reap. If we can forgive others, God will forgive us. Amen. So when you're, when you're going to pray, begin with praise. Lift him up. Worship him. And then repent. Turn away from your sins. And forgive so you can be forgiven, amen? Once you've done this, then you can go to the third step, which is the letter A, which stands for ask. Somebody say ask. Ask, A-S-K, ask. The Bible says this, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Ask, seek, knock, A-S-K, ask. The word says you have not because you ask not. Listen, ask God. Whatever it is that you're seeking, ask God for it. Sometimes people will say, but pastor, I can't ask God for a new car. I mean, I can ask him for world peace. I can ask him to heal somebody, but I, I can't ask him for things that I want. Sure you can. God will give you the desires of your heart. God want, he doesn't mind if you have things. He just doesn't want things to have you. Hello. It's okay to ask for things. And, you know, we can ask for healing, we can ask for deliverance, we can ask for forgiveness, but we can also ask for stuff if we want stuff. Amen? 
Consider the following verse in, in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. He says, therefore, I say unto you, what things? Somebody say things. He says, what things? Soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. He's talking about things. What things? Well, whatever things you, you're asking for. For years, I, I've been praying for the, the, the prayer request on the offering envelopes for years. And I remember years ago, there was a little girl that every, every Sunday, she'd put on her offering envelope, uh, I want a new pair of skates, ice skates, she said, and she, she's in Texas. I want a new pair of ice skates. And I would pray for her to get a new pair of ice skates. And I remember one time, one of my secretaries was going through the prayer request, she was going to come for me, and she said, Pastor, do you pray for all these? Uh, I said, yeah, I do. She said, do you pray for this little girl to get ice skates? <laughs> I said, yes. She said, do you think that that's really that important? I said, well, it's important to her. I said, if it's important to her, it's important to God. Because, God, because she's important to God. She says, but I think it just seems like a silly thing to spend your time praying for some little kid to get ice skates. I said, well, I feel like if it's that important to her to write down, I'm going to pray for her. And then I remember it was like a, two or three months later, we got this offering envelope and it was from the same little girl and she said this, thank you for praying for my ice skates. I got my new pair of ice skates and I went to the Olympic trials and I made it onto the Olympic team. Wow. I had no idea she was even trying. But she had been taking lessons for years. And she wanted these new skates because she thought that'd help her and she did good enough to make it to the Olympic trials. And after that, the, the, the secretary said, wow, I guess they were important. I said, they were always important to God. Amen. If, if something is important to you, it's important to God because you're important to God. Amen. You can ask for things. God tells us you can. God mentions the word things here. He's speaking about prayer and he mentions things. Consider this verse and keep in mind that this is the word of God, not the word of Pastor Rodriguez. In Matthew 7, 11, it says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them who ask him? Notice he's talking about things again. He calls them gifts and things. I, I get stuff from my grandkids that they, they don't need, but I just love them and I want to give them stuff. The other day, Harold's granddaughters were here during a uh, play practice. And after practice, I said, do y'all know where the snacks are in my office? And the other one said, yeah. <laughs> I said, y'all want a snack? Yeah. I said, well, come on, let's go get something. Now, did they need that? No, they probably didn't need it. They're, I'm sure they were fine. They looked healthy to me, you know. But I like doing that for the kids because I love the kids, you know. And you do that for your children. You do that for your grandchildren. And God will do that for us. He'll give you the desires of your heart if you'll ask him. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. A-S-K. Ask. Amen. God knows our heart. It's okay to ask him for whatever it is that you're seeking. Maybe you want to lose weight. Maybe you want to find a, 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 a mate. It's Okay. Maybe you want a new car. Maybe you want a swimming pool. You might think, well, that's, that's too much. It's not too much for God. God is a good God, amen? Now, he's a good father, and he's not going to give you more than you can handle. He's not going to give you something that's going to hurt you. Hello? You know, we need to be willing to say, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, amen? But we can ask God. It's important that we understand that God doesn't mind if we have things. He just doesn't want things to have us. Don't be afraid to ask God for whatever it is you want. James 4, 2 says this. In the past, he said, uh, you, in part, it says, you have not because you ask not. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receives. And he that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Amen. We need to pray. We ought, we ought to begin prayer with praise. We need to repent of our sin. We need to forgive others so that we can be forgiven. And we need to ask. Amen. And then the last letter in the word pray is the word why, which I, I believe means that we need to yield to God's will. To leave it in his hands and let him have the final say. 
sometimes we want to tell God what to do, and that's not what prayer is. Prayer is asking God. I remember years ago, I learned a lesson about telling somebody instead of asking somebody. I was a young man. I guess I was about seven years old. And my oldest brother was 17, and I wanted to be like him. Anybody ever had a, you know, been in a situation like that? You, somebody that you kind of idolized? I wanted to be like my oldest brother. I looked just like him, except he's more handsome now. He's got more hair than I do. <laughs> but I, I used to look like him, and I wanted to be like him. And, and he was popular and smart and what have you. And, and I remember one day we got off the school bus and came home. I think he was a senior in high school. I was like in the first grade. And uh, he walked in the house and he took his books and set them down. And I took my books and set them down. I wanted to be just like him. He walked into the kitchen and said, hi, mom, we're home. And mom said, hi. And I said, hi, mom, we're home. Yeah. He sat at the table, dining room, I sat at the table. And mom had just made some fried chicken. It was right there in the center of the table. And uh, he reached over, got a piece of fried chicken, put it on his plate. And I reached over, got a piece of fried chicken, put it on my plate. Because I wanted to be just like him. And uh, he took that piece of fried chicken, he pulled it up to his mouth, took a big bite, crunch, started chewing on it, and he looked at me, and I grabbed that, my chicken, you know, and I took a bite. And then he reached over in the center of the table, there was a jar of jalapeno peppers. And he reached in there, and he pulled out a big jalapeno pepper, and he bit it in half, crunch. He started chewing on it, he looked at me, and he smiled. I wanted to be just like him. But I couldn't reach the jalapeno peppers. I said, hey, Mom, can you give me one of them green things? She said, no, honey, I don't want to give you one of those. I said, but I want one. And she said, no, you don't. They're hot. I said, but he got one. And she goes, I know, honey. But she said, but they're hot. You don't want one. I said, but I do want one. I want to be like him. She said, but hey, they're hot. And I said, no, that's not fair. He gets one. I don't get one. That's not fair. No fair. I want one, too. It's not fair that you got him get one, but you don't get one to me. I and she said, okay. <laughs> and she reached in there, and she got the biggest jalapeno pepper out of there and she handed it to me and I didn't know this she she went to the fridge got a glass of milk and stood behind me because <laughs> she knew I was about to see Jesus amen <laughs> I'll never forget I, mean, I took a bite of that jalapeno pepper and I went Wah! and she reached over with that glass of milk she said drink it slowly honey you know I told her give me the gallon mom <laughs> you know oh man it was so hot and I remember after that day, I thought it would have sure been smart if I would have just done what mom told me to do. Hello. You know, God doesn't want to hurt you. And you might ask for something that you don't need. But don't worry, if you do, he's, he's going to tell you no. And we need to be willing to do that. Do you know that Jesus, when he prayed, he would also say, God, this, you know, this is what I'd like. But nevertheless, if, if it's not what you want from me, then let's not do it. There's an example of that in the Bible. It was when Jesus was going to go to Calvary. I want to tell you something. Jesus did not want to be crucified. He didn't want to be flogged, whipped, beaten, nailed to a cross, and suffer and die the way he did. Nobody in their right mind would want that. And in Matthew 26, verse 39, this is what Jesus said. It says, he went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed saying, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. In other words, heavenly father, I don't want to go through this. But then he went on to say, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. That's what the why stands for, yielding to the will and the word of God. We should pray. We should worship God. We should repent of our sins. And we should ask him about the things we desire. But we also need to yield and say, nevertheless, Father, this is what I want. And man, if you can do it, I'd really appreciate it. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Because, you know, in all honesty, you want his will. See, I got what I wanted that, that day. But really, what I wanted was what mom told me I should have. It would have been better if I would have yielded to her and said, well, whenever you think I'm ready, I'll try one of those. But I'm going to tell you something. When you're seven years old, is not the time, Okay. <laughs> But mom did teach me a lesson that day because she knew it would be a lesson I'd learn, and I did. And God will do that with you too. I had that happen a, another time later on in life when I was about, uh, I guess I was about 18 years old, 18, 19. 
I had just gotten saved. Uh, I was a new, new convert. And I had read about prayer, and, and it said, whatever you ask in prayer, believe in, you shall receive. And uh, there was a restaurant in, in the town I was in, and I wanted to buy it. And I was like 18, 19 years old. No experience running a restaurant, you know. But I wanted to buy this restaurant. And I prayed about it. And I went and talked to the owner, and uh, they basically said, no, you, you can't buy it. Well, that upset me because, see, I read this verse that said, whatever you ask in prayer, believe in, you shall receive. And I went back to God and I said, hey, God, your word says that if I ask in prayer, believe in, and I believe that I'm going to receive. And I prayed and I went back to the owner and went to the bank and they said no again. And man, I thought something's wrong because the word of God says I can have it if I want it. I, but again, I was a brand new baby Christian, you know. And so I went to God a third time and, and the Lord said, okay. And he stood behind me with a glass of milk, you know. <laughs> and the owner called me of the restaurant and he said, hey, he said, Richard, do you still want the restaurant? I said, yeah. He said, I'll finance it. You can buy it. Just sign the paper. And I was like, way to go, God. And I signed the paper and I lost more money in that restaurant than I had ever lost in my life. And I wished I hadn't have bought it. I wished I'd have listened to God. But I learned a valuable lesson that day. See, God will sometimes give you what you want, but what you really want is what God wants to give you. Amen? So when we pray, we need to praise God. We need to repent of our sins, and we need to, uh, to ask him for things, but we also need to yield to his will. Uh, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Amen? Not my will, but thy will okay, be done. Today, I hope the message ministered to you. Listen, I want to encourage you to invite Jesus to be Lord of your life. If you haven't done that already, do that now. All you got to do is say, Jesus, come into my life. Be Lord of my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash them away with your blood. I accept you as my Savior and Lord. And I make a vow to serve you, Jesus, as Lord of my life for the rest of my life. If you prayed that prayer with me, if you believe it in your heart, you confess with your mouth, you're saved. Amen. And I want to ask you if you would consider sowing a financial seed into the ministry. That it's simple to do. All you got to do is text any amount to the number on your screen, 940-241-4450. That number again is 940-241-4450. You can text any amount to that number. Or if you'd like, you can go on our website, uh, clc-church.com. That's clc-church.com. And on the menu bar, the word, you'll see the word give. Click on the button that says give. A menu will drop down, and you can give through PayPal that way. Or if you'd like to mail an offering in, you can do that. Our mailing address is 806 Russell Palmer Road, Kingwood, Texas. And the zip is 77339. That's 806 Russell Palmer Road, Kingwood, Texas. Zip is 77339. Of course, my favorite way for you to give is to come into the church and fellowship with us. We just want to get to meet you and love you and uh, pray with you. And we hope to see you here soon. Come out and visit us, Christian Life Center here in Kingwood, Texas. Once again, thanks for watching. God bless you.